morning chaps welcome along to the vlog that chunk up there there is a piece of one by one five mil steel which I ordered along with all this stuff on the floor when I ordered the treads they were the treads the angle line were the treads for the staircase and the idea is to increase the dimensions of this little welding table I mean we've got by with it so far but now I've changed the orientation of the workshop I think we can actually fit a larger welding table in there which means that we can reposition this massive vise and just have a better workflow around this area I'm also going to put the new welding table on wheels then everything in the workshop apart from the built-in stuff like this cabinet here will be mobile and we can move them around if we need to make a bit more space put them out there into the brewery space and then bring them back in when we're finished so that is a job on the list but it isn't for today today's job is going to be to finish off the staircase which we have nearly done there's just a few trims to go around the edge of the oak flooring and then that is put to bed i can come back out of the workshop out of the pub then and as you can see the saws missing from over here that's next door we can start to put all these little bits away and probably start to crack on with another job and one of those other jobs is i would like to make a mixing paddle for the mash tun using one of these plaster mixers relatively cheap from tool station so if i burn it out it's not a big expense the drawback of course is the uh mixing arm is galvanized steel no good really for putting in the mash or you know having to go through an acid wash caustic wash and the like the caustic will strip the zinc off straight away so that's something that we cannot do so i've bought some little bits of stainless steel bar which are down there at the moment but we've got like a I think a 16 mil shaft and then some 10 mil smaller pieces of steel which will bend and we'll try and either emulate what we've got here because this does a pretty good job at mixing plaster so it should do a good job at mixing grain and fail that if it's uh, not working quite as well we'll weld on some little paddle flaps or something like that to agitate the mash a little bit more and we might even at some point be expanding this project to something that can bolt onto the top of the mash tun so it wouldn't be at risk of getting wet because of course if i drop this in i have to run away of course it will be <laughs> it will be shitiated and uh, implemented via a ground fault uh, gfi d so uh, i don't get electromocuted you know, an RCD, residual current device, whatever they're called. But at the moment, we're going to use it manually when it's made. Just got to weld up the components and make sure everything fits. I wonder if I could just use a bit of threaded bar, stainless steel threaded bar. Well, we'll see. We'll come to this project another time, but this is one that's on the list. So I'm just going over all the steel that was delivered the other day and that obviously involves the new welding table the angle iron for the treads upstairs and some stainless steel for a badass mash tun mixing paddle and the heavens have opened oh my goodness well it's a good job we've got this uh massive tent that nobody's Enjoying friggin' lockdown. So, as soon as it's freezing cold and wet outside, the rain has stopped now, though. I've got the little bit of threaded bar that we spoke about this morning. We're about to cut it on that little pencil line with the grinding disc. And I'm going to set about trying to make a mixing paddle for the mash tun. Hopefully this will work. I think we're going to need some more bar than what's showing. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We don't know until we brew. 
but what I do know is that I can't find any M14 threaded rod to weld onto the end so we're going to have to kind of do a little bit of bodging and get the original stick here cut it off around there weld it onto the new piece so we can screw it in and out of the mixer and then with any luck we'll be able to just spray some lacquer or some liquid galve on there just so this doesn't come into contact with any cleaning fluids but it shouldn't be a problem because we'll have just a little top section there like that that's going to be going straight into this bit so there shouldn't be too much galvanized carbon steel on the whole shebang meaning less risk of rust and thing so i'm going to set up the grinder we'll chop this bar off and then we'll cut down this thin rod and see if we can bend it into the correct shape so i've managed to clamp the stainless into the vise let's bring the uh, original over so we've obviously increased the size that goes without saying doesn't it go big or go home and we managed to put a bit of a bend on it it's relatively equal but not perfect in fact it might end up being too big and then we've nipped these two corners down here and made them one I am worried that we're not going to have enough uh, steel, but we shall see. And then now I have to try and reorientate the base section, the steel, and put some of these uh, helical flutes into it. I don't think this is going to work out as symmetrical and as nice as I'd actually want it to, but fingers crossed we get a bit closer. I'm telling you. I'm telling you boys and girls, that looks a lot better than it did 10 minutes ago. So I think that will do for a mixing paddle. I've got the shaft on vertical. The tines, whilst they aren't bent perfectly, are pretty damn close to what we had here previously. A lot of fettling has gone into that, a heck of a lot. But you know what? That's about as close as you can get with something like that. And there was a point when I was putting it together that I thought, this is going to end up in the fuck it bucket. But thankfully, we pulled through. So now, all I have to do, I've chopped this section off the, uh, the connector for the mixer. We've just got to stick this up on the top there. Weld that on. Get some of this galve off as well so it doesn't bother me. I'm going to put a bevel on there so we get a nice tight weld onto it. Um, and then go around and fill it until it comes flush with the rest of the parent metal. Just to give it plenty of strength. So we'll be back when that's done. So you should be able to see now, both of these tips have been sharpened like pencil. So when we weld these two pieces together... We can get right down into the root of the steel, right into the heart, if you think of it as a tree. And that means we'll be making sure that it's as strong a joint as possible. I have to figure out now a way of squaring it up. I think what I'm going to do is stick it in the corner of a piece of angle iron. And of course, that will mean that it's going to be sat level all the way across. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. I think I've got a little bit over here that should be short enough. Here we are, look. So provided there's no swarf in the corners, and there does seem to be a little bit, it should sit level. So I'll just clear this swarf out and I'll show you what I mean. So here's the setup. Angle iron clamped both sides which means that this bar now will run parallel to the angle iron, provided, of course, we're making the assumption that the angle iron is straight. And then over here, we've got the same thing, but with the tiny little uh, bolt section just hidden away in there, look. And what we're looking for... Now, this is tricky because the diameter of these two are different. So I'm having to kind of bodge this up a little bit. And I am winging it. 
to provide the right kind of uh, distance here off the base of the steel in order for this to, this is too on job, in order for this to line up with the centre of that piece of steel there. Maybe if I zoom in just a touch more, you'll be able to see what we're aiming for. So there's the gap. And we do want a little gap in between, because we're going to bridge that with a bit of steel. And then we're going to fill the rest of this up with filler rod until it's flush with the parent metal. And hopefully we get a straight fitting. Now I'm not going to know straight off the bat. I'm just going to wing it as close as I can get it. Put a little bit of filler in there. Then go over to the machine itself. Screw it in. Give it a few tweaks. Pull the trigger -oo and see how we get on. I think that's as good as it's going to get. So I'm going to go and fill this. And hopefully it comes out exactly how we want it to. Complete. There we have it. I'm trying to prop up the... Uh, the camera so we can get some shots here. I don't have a tripod. That's the finished article. I haven't hit it with a grinder or anything yet or even cleaned it up. So I hope you can see. It's probably not the best angle to be fair, but I'm limited in what I can do in terms of propping the phone up somewhere. So here we go. Let's screw this bad boy onto the mixer. Oh dear me, I'm going to smack myself in the face with it then. Not if it's all that. Right. That is attached. That will go into the mash tun. And that is mixing. Well, if that don't do the trick, I don't know what will. There we go, let me uh, take the camera. <laughs> I've actually got it. Oh, Jesus. I've got it in the, uh, in the vise, <laughs> of all things. But what do you reckon, folks? Mixing paddle, a la Harry Brew 69. You can probably buy one of these in stainless steel for 40 quid from bloody eBay. I know I didn't look. Surely it's not going to be a metre long like this one is. In fact, it's longer than a metre. But that didn't cost me a lot in steel. Probably about £12 in steel for the stock. And then a little bit of welding. And let's face it, with an argon tank like that, well, we can afford to do a little bit of spot welding here and there. But I think that's fantastic. That concludes today's project. Well, several projects, actually. We've finished the stairs off. We've got this done. And uh, that was a project I didn't think I was going to get to today. Now, before I go, I did want to say a couple of things to mainly to Mr. Andrew Lynch, who's been watching, um, waiting for me to review his wonderful beers, which he was kind enough to send to me. So we've got the, uh, well that's the cider there. This is the Hokum Stomp Oatmeal Porter. And what's this here? The Elvis Juice. Dude, I'm gonna get stuck into these over Christmas. Uh, a couple of people know, but not many. I've been doing a bit of a crash diet. Uh, I'm 100, well I was, 105 kilograms, knocking on the door of 17 stone and quite frankly I thought it was about time I shifted a little bit of that uh, so I've been doing this diet and it's worked I've dropped quite a few kilograms in about three weeks but it's Christmas time isn't it and I actually want to put some videos up of me reviewing my beers letting you know what I think of the 12 beers of Christmas and then also uh, I want to get stuck into those beers from Mr Lynch as well he did send me another one but I, sh I shared it with Sam I don't think we've got any of that on video, but we both thoroughly enjoyed it, mate. 
So look out for some beer reviews of mine and of uh, Andy's and uh, have a look at, yeah, the website. <laughs> because we're going to do a deal. We're going to do a deal. We're going to do a deal, boys and girls, for Christmas. New Year, New Year deal. So on that note, I'll leave you with a view of the Borka Mashton Mixer. And we'll sign out for now. We will be back with plenty of videos over the coming period. But I am finishing work. All right, I lied. You know as well as I do. I'm going to get bored one day off and I'll be in here doing a project for We'll see. Cheers, folks. I'll see you. Oh, shit, I've dropped it. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>